Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Meat Made, and today I am going to show you one of the ways that I save my failed 3D prints. That way, they turn into beautiful works of art instead of something that's just in the recycling bin. So, let's go ahead and get into this video. <laughs> So whether you're new to 3D printing or you've been doing it a while, failure is just part of the game. We all have failed 3D prints, but I'm going to show you one way that I actually am able to save some of my 3D prints. This technique is specifically for if you have under extrusion or if you had a clogged nozzle and then it fixed itself. So you have those little wispy holes where your walls aren't thick enough. This technique is going to help you. So I 3D printed this thing bust from Inspire 3D. And I'll go ahead and put a link to it in the description below. But the issue was I actually was messing with my settings in Cura for a previous model I was slicing and I forgot to change my settings back. I was using the wrong profile setting. And there was a lot of little issues like little holes and gaps in the 3D print. And it looks good for the most part. It's only when you really get close to it. So instead of throwing it out, I figured we're going to save this failed 3D print. So let's go ahead and jump over to the table and I'm going to show you this easy process. So if you see right here, I actually had a lot of under extrusion because I actually had my settings wrong. Because you can see it's almost everywhere in this print that there are these extrusion issues, like these little slight holes, not enough filament was coming out. Now the one thing I will say when it comes to this technique, it doesn't work with every single model. This model right here, when we're talking about Thing, I mean, he is just a rocky textured surface. And this is perfect because I may lose a little bit of definition in some of the detailed areas, and I'm gonna be very careful around those specifically. But for the most part, I'm just going to be adding even more texture to this and filling in all of these holes along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to get started on this project, I am going to be using this Gorilla Wood Filler, and I've got some stir sticks, I've got an old brush, I've got some water right here, and I've got a little cup to be able to work in. And the big thing I want to say about the brush, it's good to get a brush that you're, oh, it's okay that you ruin, okay? So this is seen better days, and but it's still got some good grip to it when it, uh, it comes to brushing, like it's the bristles are still nice and firm. So I'm going to be using this, and you don't really want to use one of those like wide bristle brushes or anything because those hairs come out, and I know the hairs aren't going to be coming out of this brush. But for the size of this, I'm going with a bigger brush. If I had a smaller model, I would be using just a little smaller of a brush. And you could easily be using like a brush like this if you're wanting to just use this technique in just one little area, you can absolutely use this. All right, real quick. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to join my Patreon, you'll get exclusive access to my private Discord servers where we talk about painting, printing, and everything in between. You'll also get access to all of my behind-the-scenes content, where I show you what I'm working on, what the upcoming videos are, and you can have the opportunity to vote on the videos that I make. If you're interested, the link's below. Other than that, let's get back to the video. Okay, so first thing is all I'm going to be doing is grabbing a good amount of this filler putty and just grabbing it and putting it in my dish. And there we go. So there we go. Got a nice clod. Now just seal this back up so it doesn't dry up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to add some water. There we go. And we want to get this really thinned out. All right, so now I have this, and you can see how thin I've gotten it. I mean, it is a milkshake consistency, if not a little thinner. Um, I just kept adding water and you stir it until all the lumps are gone. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to start in on this big guy. So, 
we've got all of these holes everywhere. So what I'm going to do is just apply a very thin coat over this entire thing. So I'm just gonna get some on my brush and literally just start brushing this on and getting it in all of the cracks and letting it just kind of get in there. So I'm kind of pushing it in and just wiping it down. And this is getting in all of those little holes. But I also don't want any huge blobs or anything like that. So all I'm doing is just wiping it away. So once it gets in those holes, I just kind of wipe it and leave it like that. And I'm just going to keep doing this on the entire model. So I have finished with my thin coat everywhere and it is looking fantastic because I wanted that grit and it has it. Now the one thing I will say that I really like about the Gorilla Wood Filler is there is a tiny bit of grit in the actual wood filler. So now I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and then we are going to see what the final results look like. So now that the wood putties all dry. I'm going to go ahead and apply a primer coat to it. And what I'm using is this two-in-one filler and sandable primer. This stuff is fantastic when you're trying to fill little tiny gaps and get rid of any kind of layer lines because it's a pretty thick paint. And the nice thing is, is you can actually sand it after it's nice and dry. So I'm giving it a nice even coat all over the areas where I applied the wood putty. And now you can see the final result. It got all of those holes nice and filled and there's a good amount of texture in it now. You still can see a little bit of the under extrusion, but when I start putting paint on this, it is going to start disappearing and just blend in with the texture. Now, if you're not happy with the results you're getting, you can absolutely do the wood filler over again. And you can just keep repeating this process until you've got it how you want. And if your 3D print is meant to be smooth, you can also sand it at this point to try to get out any of those little imperfections. So the next step is I'm going to take it back to my spray booth and then apply a surface primer. And I'm using the Vallejo Black Surface Primer with my airbrush. And I'm just trying to get really good coverage all over the model because this is going to prepare me for when I start to paint the model. Then the last thing I did was I went ahead and I took some white ink, put it in my airbrush, and just did a zenithal highlight on top of him and just sprayed him from the top to give a little bit of a highlight. And I also sprayed the teeth a little bit to help me with when I start painting this. So I'm not painting white on black. And here are the final results. And I think it turned out really good. I'm really happy with how it filled in and all of that extra little texture and grit that this putty has in it. And that's why I chose this putty specifically for that extra texture. Because Thing, let's be honest, he absolutely needs to have some more texture to him. Now remember the one thing that I was saying is you got to make sure you're using the right putty for the right situation. For this, I absolutely wanted texture on here. And this Gorilla Wood Filler, this has just a little bit of grit to it. And it's fantastic to put on there because I'm not sanding this. I wanted that grit. But on the other hand, this stuff is super smooth when you thin it down. It's almost like a paste or even a paint consistency. And this will still get into those cracks, but you can sand it. So if you have a smooth surface that has a little bit of under extrusion, this stuff will work perfect for you because you just brush it on and then we're going to just sand it off. And that's the big thing to remember. You want to use the right putty for the right job. For me, the grit is the way to go. And that's where this Gorilla Putty is fantastic. It's a really good putty and it's super easy to sand if you did want to sand it down a little. And I realize not everybody is going to be having under extrusion issues, but when you do have under extrusion issues, this is fantastic because it'll fill in those gaps. One thing you might 
actually have to use more than one coat, depending on how thin you have this if you're sanding it down. Because when it shrinks, it'll actually dip into it just a little bit. I didn't really have that problem with this one because I was kind of putting it on a little bit thick, but still trying to get all of the detail and definition out of all of the cracks in this guy. So that's it for today. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you over here in this next video.